Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use a peer trained deep learning model as part of your Zen image analysis pipeline. And uh, as you probably know, Appear is a cloud platform for image analysis. It makes deep learning easy for you. And if you are from biotech and uh, some sort of an industry where you can benefit from this, go ahead and hit the start free trial. It takes you down to uh, the section where you can fill in uh, some of your information. We'll talk to you about what your image processing challenges are and see how we can help you. Now, if you already have a login uh, account, go ahead and uh, hit login you will see my applications part and this is not what we're going to talk about we are going to talk about how to train your model and it's under annotate and uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, load our rat kidney glomeruli data set i'm going to click annotate it's going to open that in the web viewer as you can see i have already annotated and this is the result now uh, this is not a tutorial about how to annotate and train your model. That's a different tutorial. But the goal here is to have a trained model for glomeruli, trained model for nuclei, and we're going to use those in Zen. Okay, so here you can see uh, how the annotated regions are and how the predictions are in green. Let me turn the background on and off. And you can see how the segmentation is pretty good. What you're seeing on the screen is segmentation. Now let's go back to a different image turn the glomeruli on and off, turn the predictions on and off. This one is also giving a pretty good result as you can see. I'm very happy. So uh, let me go back and open the nuclei trained model because I need these two models. And here is an image where you can see the my annotations and you can also see the segmentation. Again, segmentation can be slightly better. If I annotated a bit more, I would have gotten better segmentation, but I'm happy with this because I can add image processing steps in Zen, which I'll show you. Okay, so now we have these two trained models, uh, deep learning models, one for glomeruli, one for nuclei. So let me scroll down and figure out where my uh, trained trainings are. So I can go all the way down and download the models for local use. So I'm gonna click on this download ML model and let's, uh, uh, you can download the legacy model if you're working on Zen 3.4 or earlier, like 3.3. And if you have Zen 3.5 or later, then uh, you can download the new model. So let's download the new model since I have Zen 3.5. And uh, while it's doing that, we can go back to our train and uh, download the glomeruli model. So the previous one was nuclei. So let's go ahead, scroll down all the way and download the ML model and let's download the new model. The goal is to detect nuclei, uh, glomeruli first and then within each glomeruli, detect nuclei. That's why we train two different models. So let's open ZenBlue. It should take a second. There you go. Let me open this in image processing mode. And again, yeah, there you go. Now let us uh, start by importing the trained models into Zen first. And you must have IntelliSys in Zen. So let's go to analysis and find the IntelliSys trainable segmentation and import and let's go ahead and import our rat kidney trained models and i renamed them here so you can see i am downloading or importing the glomeruli and let's say okay and we should see the model uh, it's giving a warning oh it says the model with the same id already exists well i imported this model uh, uh, earlier so it's giving me that hey it's exactly the same model so as you can see i have the glomeruli i have the nuclei the two models that we just created. Okay, now that I have them in the system, now I can go to image analysis and start creating a pipeline. So for that, let's load a test image. There are three glomeruli here. Again, I don't wanna work on the entire whole thin section, right? So I wanna start with a smaller area, set my analysis and then uh, expand it and apply it later to a larger section. So I'm calling this uh, tutorial rat kidney, um, that's fine. So let's go ahead and say, okay, I'm creating a new analysis pipeline. Now let's go ahead and edit image analysis setting. And step number one, name our classes appropriately. Let's call this glomerulus. And the summation of all glomerulus is glomeruli. So let's go ahead and call this glomeruli. And there you go. So I have my glomerulus now. Now I can add another class for nuclei, but when you do that, it's at the same hierarchy as your glomeruli, but we want that to be a subset. That's why I'm adding a subclass. And now I'm calling this nucleus. 
uh, nuclei. Uh, sorry, I should change this to nucleus. This is nuclei. So let me come back. Nucleus, because individual nucleus and a su summation of all of those is nuclei. So let me rename this as nuclei. Okay, we are all set with the naming and you can change the colors and all that, but let's go next. Uh, not much here, let's go next and we need to do something here. So how do we detect glomerulus? Not by global thresholding, but by using uh, deep learning. So for that, let's select IntelliSys Trainable Class Segmenter, say okay, and now we need to select the right model. So the right model is our rat kidney HE glomeruli and the back, uh, we need to segment the glomeruli, not the background. So there you go. It's showing me, and there are certain little regions right there that need to be cleaned up. Again, you can get better model, but uh, you'll always see some areas like this, but we'll take care of that later on. In fact, you can take care of that by just sliding this ob minimum object size. I don't do much processing right here. I'll just leave it right there. We'll take care of it later in the next screen anyway. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and import the nucleus model. Exactly the same process, IntelliSys Trainable Class Segmenter. Say okay, and select the model. I would like to select rat kidney, IHC, no, not IHC, HE, nuclei, and the model class is nuclei. Say okay, there you go, it's segmented. Now let's zoom in to see how good of a job it's doing. You see those two nuclei are together, they are together. We need to separate them again, better training probably. Let's also take care of minimum object size. But again, better training does not necessarily mean you'll be able to separate them. So let's go ahead and you can perform some binary operations. But for now, I'm looking for a watershed. Let's do that. Three is okay. There you go. So sometimes traditional uh, operations are very helpful, not just deep learning. So we got very nicely segmented objects. You can go ahead and uh, verify those. And if I'm happy here. So let's mo go ahead and click next. Um, not oh, actually let's uh, let's uh, take care of some of the object size here so let's click on glomerulus let's take care of those little ones I want to filter them by area you can filter them by intensity and a whole bunch of other features roundedness but let's pick area for now and uh, what else I, I mean let's just say okay for now and uh, now all the glomeruli are white, which means they're not counted. Now I'm going to click on them to define the minimum and maximum area. Uh, I usually turn the maximum area off because the largest glomeruli, I don't know what the size is. And for minimum, let's go a bit lower, like 3000 pixels, because some of glomeruli may be smaller and that's fine. Let's do exactly the same even for nucleus. Select the features and let's stick with our area for now. Okay, and let's start clicking on some of the nuclei. You can uh, type your values if you know exactly what the minimum size is going to be. Let's go ahead and click on these. Click, and these are all the large ones, so we can just uncheck the maximum, so they're all picked up. And you see how we have some of the smaller ones. I'm increasing the minimum size to five pixels, and it's not picking up some of these uh, smaller ones. If you really like to pick those up, then you can change the minimum size. But I think for now we are good for this exercise. At least you see the process that I'm following. So I'm okay, I'm not gonna change this minimum. I'm happy here. So let's go ahead and go to the next screen. Nothing to do here, next screen. And here, let us uh, uh, select the features of interest that we would like to report. So for nucleus, let's go ahead and select. Now this is basically what features do we want to export, like to be measured. We already have area. Let's uh, scroll down. What else is uh, useful? Maybe circularity, compactness, diameter. That's fine. Again, I'll let you scroll through all of these and figure out exactly what's useful for you, but let's say okay. Let's do glomerulus now. Let's pick uh, pretty much the same ones for glomerulus. Area is already there. Now let's go down to C. Circularity, compactness, diameter. Say OK. And now let's do one other thing. Let's select the summation of nuclei because we want to uh, export the number of nuclei per glomerulus. So I want to just select the count there and say, OK, copy the count to the glomerulus, not glomeruli right there. So for every glomerulus, you know how many nuclei are there. If that's of uh, importance to you, go ahead and select that. 
Okay, I think we are approaching there next and we are done. And uh, I mean, for, for, for this particular screen, you can see the ID versus the count. We are done setting up image analysis. Again, we see the count over there. And now let's go ahead and finish this process. And uh, the image analysis setting is saved now. Now it's ready to be used. Let's go ahead and start analysis. Should take a few seconds. We're getting there. There you go. And all of these, uh, they're analyzed right there. And for each glomerulus, you can see what the ID is and how many objects are there. And you can go ahead and plot them. You can export them. You can create your custom chart right there, histogram. In this case, it doesn't make sense. Just scatter plot is fine. OK, it's working great for this image. But let's go ahead and bring some other image right there. So this is, again, a larger area. And let's start analysis. This may take a few extra seconds. OK, so there you go. Now we have uh, all of these uh, nuclei segmented within each glomeruli, and you have the number of, uh, you have the count. There you go. You can click on the glomerulus, or you can just click on the ID to see exactly the uh, same glomerulus over there. OK, now you see how a peer trained models can be used, the deep learning, to power up your image analysis pipelines in Zen. So please subscribe to this channel for more information, and thank you very much.